What's up YouTube? Gemini Johnny, back again with another new series for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at some stories that are submitted by you, the subscribers. This is going to be a little bit different of a format in this one. We won't be looking at any footage, unless footage is submitted. I only have two for now, so it will be a shorter video. I hope to do more in the future, so if you have a story you'd like to share, then send it over to my email up here, or you can DM it to me on Instagram, right over here, or any social media really. I'm at Gemini Johnny, I'm pretty much everything now. Now that being said, this will not be a video where I intend to poke holes or try and debunk or anything of that nature. These are people taking the time out of their day to write out their lived experience. So I intend to treat these stories with the respect that they deserve because I would much rather believe every one of these stories and eventually maybe somebody makes one up and puts it in here. I would much rather treat these stories with respect and let that happen than try and poke holes in somebody's actual lived experience because that's just rude. If somebody's going to take the time out of their day to send me a story that they allow me to use for a video, I would never disrespect that. So I'm kind of rambling. I know you guys know me. It's what I do. But that being said, I'm reading these stories for the first time. So I don't pre-screen these just like my videos. I'm not going to pre-screen these. Uh, I'm going to read them for the first time so I can give you my genuine real reactions to the story. Uh, that being said, if I ever make jokes or anything like that, I'm really not trying to be disrespectful. It's just how my brain operates. <laughs> it's what I want to jump to is to make jokes about things that I can't explain. Last thing I want to say is I got the moving background. So if that bothers you, let me know in the comments and I'll go back to a static image for the next video. But I don't know, I thought it was cool. I wanted to try something different. So I might start using these from now on. All right, now without further ado, let's jump right in. You told me in chat tonight you'd like to hear about my experience with the Ohio grass man. I was 11 years old when it happened. We lived in the middle of the woods back then, and I had just got my first machete for my birthday. I was so excited that whole next day at school to take it out on my adventures in the woods. Dull edge blade parental approved. <laughs> as soon as I got home, I grabbed it and ran out the back door. So I'm out in the woods an easy quarter mile from the house having fake sword fights with weeds among other things young boys get into. I see a huge old vine and decided I want to go for a swing. So I stabbed my machete into the ground and swung away. When I returned to my machete, I realized I had stabbed it straight through a toad. Oof. Alright, well, off to a good start. Kids being kids. And what a twist there at the end. I was not expecting that. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll get into the rest of it. Sounds a lot like crap I did when I was a kid. Ran around in the woods behind my house. And we used to go in like junkyards that were that was back there. We used to go back there and like break windows and steal speakers and I mean, allegedly. This was the first thing I had ever killed and being of Native American descent, it broke my heart and made me cry killing for no reason. As I'm on my knees holding the toad, crying, my blonde lab ran up to me with a live baby rabbit in its mouth. I believe still to this day he did that as a gift to make me feel better. So I released the bunny and began to bury the toad as my dog ran up again, but this time he was growling towards a huge tree I was near. As I looked up, I saw a huge hand, arm, and head. It was watching me. I hurriedly buried the toad and all I could think to say is, I'm sorry, and ran. I get home, tell my mom and her boyfriend. He thought it was a poacher, grabbed a gun, and told me to take him. When we arrived at the spot I buried the toad, we saw four big trees had been broken off and stacked like a teepee over the burial. My mom's boyfriend looks at me and says, Finally, someone else has seen him too. I asked him later what he meant, and he replied, When I was building the foundation for our house, Grassman had threw rocks at me and ran off several times. To me, that still makes sense to this day, because he could have ripped me apart but saw my sorrow and respect for the life of the toad and allowed me to leave. I doubt this is interesting enough to be in a vid, but if you want to, feel f if you want to feel free. Keep it up, brother. Love the content. Wow. Uh, John Smith, I believe, is a pseudonym. But thank you to John Smith. I really appreciate you sharing your story with me. That's wild stuff. Oh, I have grass, man. I want to know what he looks like. Cause I'm, I have an image for what he looks like in my head, but... Oh, yeah, he's like a Bigfoot type of dude. Yeah, that's kind of what I was picturing, but more of a... Yeah, like a greenish wild. Man, that would be terrifying. I don't know what I would do if I saw that. I, I guess I probably would have done the same thing and ran. It's really sad. I know it's... I've, I hit a bird one time, like, while I was driving, and a long time ago, and I understand, like... Especially when you don't mean to. Like, it's one thing if you're out and I can understand, like, hunting and you're going to use every part of the animal and, like, you're not going to let anything go to waste. Like, I can understand the ideology behind it, even though I don't really do that. But yeah, when it's an accident, oh, man, the hurt you feel because you don't mean to cause any harm to anything, especially not take a life. So uh, it was very kind of you to give him a proper burial. And yeah, obviously it paid off because the grass man watched you and he gave him his own little um, grave site. So that's pretty cool. It's, it, it does make me think that maybe these things, these cryptids and things could, well, at least some of them, could probably be, if they weren't so like hunted or in danger by people, I don't know, hurt them or ca capture them, then we could probably garner some sort of working relationship with them. Especially like they obviously, or it sounds like they obviously feel some sort of emotion for life and 
care of her life. So, man, it's a really interesting story. I appreciate you sharing. If I ever get up to Ohio to do a, a uh, cryptid tracking show or anything like that, or series or whatever, definitely more than invited to come along and see what we can capture on film, not capture, capture. But Oh, and lastly, it's absolutely interesting enough to share in a video. It's, it's super interesting stuff. I love anything that's unexplained or that we don't really fully understand. It's right up my alley, man. And firsthand accounts are absolutely my favorite kinds of stories because with videos like people can fake videos for various reasons to get the likes and the follows and like there's monetary things to gain but people just telling their stories and experiences hold the most value to me because you don't have any reason to make that up and tell me that and it's not even anything that wild it's just you ran into something you don't that we don't fully understand so super interesting stuff man so thank you for sharing all right we'll get into the next story this one's a little bit longer but sounds like it's gonna be a good one mentions an angel sighting in the subject line Okay, so obviously this person wanted to remain anonymous, so I've blanked out their name. My name is... Firstly, it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Secondly, I don't mind if you share details of our conversation, but I ask that my identity remain between us. Fully understandable. I can absolutely do that. I'm not the type to seek attention from my experiences. In 10 years, I have not sought monetary or egotistical gains from what I saw. I take that as a sign of my authenticity. I live in Ontario, Canada. I was brought up as an atheist and had no previous belief or vested interest in such things. In fact, I used to openly ridicule those who believed in angels. That was until the day I saw one with my own eyes. It was September 17th, 2013, and I was driving to spend some time with an old friend out of town. As I drove along the familiar highway, I noticed something in the sky in the distance. At first I thought it was a bird, but as I drove towards it, I noticed that it was much larger and farther away than initially perceived. As I approached, I could see very large wings, a human torso, and a long serpent tail flying towards me above the highway. Whoa. It turned its head and looked directly at me as it approached. Then it circled around and began to fly alongside my vehicle for over a minute before landing in a field adjacent to the road. I was in shock. It was unbelievable. And in fear, I drove past the being while it stared at me until my car drove out of sight. It was the creepiest and most unsettling moment of my existence. That couple of minutes changed the entire course of my life. I still can't explain it, but the effects are felt just the same. When I got home after the sighting, I found a toy double-decker bus leaning on my bedroom door, as if to fall when the door was opened. No one had been in my house, and I had not ever seen that toy before. Being completely overcome by the sighting of that being, I thought little of the toy and placed it on my TV as I sat down to contemplate what I had just seen. I owned my own business and had to work the following morning. It was a surreal day coming to terms with the previous day's events. Event. When I got home that evening, my first action was to turn on the news to see if anyone else had reported what I saw. Except when I turned on the news, it was showing a double-decker bus that had been struck by a train close to where I had witnessed the winged humanoid on the previous day. Whoa. Upon further examination of the toy, it had a deep puncture in the exact position where the actual double-decker bus was struck by the train. I still have the toy, and yes, it unnerves me deeply. That was not my last contact with this being, but it is something that I wanted to share with you given all the uncertainty surrounding the topic, especially when you mentioned in the chat that your mother has had a similar encounter. I would love to hear about it, Johnny. At the same time, I have included a very summarized account. If you have further questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Wow. Uh, and then he signed it. Uh, cheers for now, big guy. Get back to me at your leisure, all the best. So I'm going to email both these people back. It's the first time I've read either of their emails. I had them saved in a folder to get to whenever I recorded this. So, whoa, that's a wild story. Again, obviously, I don't know what I would do. Like, it feels like it would melt your brain to see something like that. <laughs> I can understand. I think you said that couple of minutes changed the entire course of my life. I'm sure, because that would just break your worldview of, like, everything you know and understand to be true. Especially if, like, I mean, obviously, you watch my you know, videos and you're into, you know, that the, at least the unexplained paranormal weird type of content. So, uh, I, I am curious if that happened before or after, like if you were interested in that stuff before this experience or if this made you more interested in it because yeah, experiences, I haven't experienced anything truly unexplainable, like really r out there. I've had a few like glitch in the mo matrix moments. One time I saw a Prius that was, that had a really loud motor and that just still don't understand it i try not to think about it too much and yeah i guess it could have been a, somebody had swapped a real motor into a prius but i don't even know if that's a possible thing and yeah I mean, most of the things that happened to me that were like truly unexplainable or those around me a lot of those happened when i was really young so i've kind of just grown up being interested in all this kind of stuff so i do wonder if that would be a weird transition from like not really believing or caring about any of the unexplained or paranormal or any of that kind of stuff to then having an experience that then you're like oh i need to know everything <laughs> so uh super interesting story thank you for sharing i appreciate it my theory with a lot of these not necessarily yours but i think it might fall under the, it could fall under the same uh theory 
or it could line up or however you want to say it. But my theory with a lot of like cryptids and unexplained sightings and like these beings and stuff that we're seeing is especially with aliens now, more and more people are believing in them and it feels like disclosure is happening slowly. I think a lot of these beings might be some sort of aliens that are here. Like maybe a lot of them travel. If there's one race of aliens, there's probably a lot of races of aliens. So I do wonder if a lot of these, like I've always wondered if Bigfoot is an alien. Like we think that it's some you know, ape-like being, but in actuality, it's some advanced primate alien species that knows how to space travel and comes here to do whatever it needs and then leaves. <laughs> it's uh, it's it, probably not, but it's my fun little theory. So yeah, so I wonder if this thing that you saw was some sort of alien or if angels and aliens are the same thing because they don't really talk about angels that much in the official bible they do i believe in some of the you know excluded books of the bible whether those are real or not or up to interpretation and conversation i guess but yeah and the official bible doesn't really talk about aliens so now if aliens are real who's to say that aliens weren't like maybe jesus was an alien that's how he could perform all those miracles I know, probably not, but, but that is an interesting. I do want to. I do wonder about if you, if you, if people, not you, that's in this story, uh, but just people in general, if they're super religious or have like very strong beliefs in a certain religion, like what they, what they think. What are their thoughts on aliens? Because I've asked a few people that that I know that are religious, um, and they don't really have much like a good answer. And I guess there is no good answer, but it is interesting to hear people's theories. And because my basic belief on this is getting a little off topic of this video, but it's the last thing I'll touch on and we'll wrap it up. My basic belief on religions is that none of them are inherently bad. They all teach good lessons and they're all good things to live by. So I don't think anybody's doing wrong by being in a religion. But I think a lot of religions, their lessons and teachings are used for things that that religion doesn't teach, like hate and judgment. And pretty much every religion teaches, you know, love people, be nice to people. It's pretty much what every religion teaches, like at their core, their religious texts, I should say. Like I said, a lot of religious people have taken those texts and misinterpreted them in my belief and used those to do lots of hateful things. Yeah, I won't get too deep into that. But overall, I don't think religion is bad by any means. I just think there are certain bad faith actors within every, and that's going to be every group. And don't get me started on the Tom Cruise religion. I'm not even going to say it, but oh man, I'm going to do a real deep dive video on them someday too. And we'll see how it goes. I don't know. Maybe I won't. Because <laughs> they do, they, phew, they scare me. I'm not going to lie. They are, I mean, they're a perfectly fine religion and they're not doing anything wrong at all. Has anybody seen Shelly? once again thank you both for sharing your stories i really appreciate it um it was really cool of you to take the time to write those out and let me know your experiences and anyone watching this if you would like to share a story that you have whether it's a ghost encounter or a, you know a bigfoot cryptid type of encounter or just something that was weird that you can't explain you know all those stories are super interesting to me like i said i know people that have some interesting stories and i would like to share their stories on this series eventually but i would like for them to write those in and share those with me and get their permission to share those as opposed to just me telling their stories because that doesn't seem right so what else what else what else what am i at 21 minutes this is gonna be you know a 15 minute video or so it's not bad build these up maybe do like two maybe like three or four next time but yeah i'll probably play around with the format of this video a little bit i don't know exactly how i want to do it i just it just kind of hit me that it would be fun to do user submitted videos because i do like people's personal experiences so much those are my favorite kind of stories I'll play around with the formatting and see what I end up, you know, what this video series ends up looking like. But for now, I'll just keep reading the stories and maybe I'll add in some stuff as I can and have the time to. So yeah, once again, if you would like to share your story and, put it, and have it in a future video, I would say potentially, but as of now, those are my only stories that have been sent in. So I'm hoping to get like three or four in, next, in this video for next month. So if you'd like to share your story, send them in. I'll put my email on the screen and in the description below. And you can also reach out to me on social media at Gemini John on pretty much everything. Threads, Instagram, Twitter. I don't really use Twitter anymore. X, whatever. I'm not calling it X. It's so dumb. What else am I on? Oh, TikTok. I'm Gemini Johnny on TikTok. I mostly just post clips from the reaction videos, but I don't know. I hope to do some different stuff on TikTok eventually. So yeah, send over your stories if you would like them to be in a future video. I think I already said that, but just in case. Catch me every Tuesday and Thursday for a brand new reaction to creepy TikToks video and every Sunday for a video like this or maybe a live stream or a conspiracy theories TikToks or maybe those close calls. I don't know, but every Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday I'll be posting so don't forget to like subscribe and turn on that notification bell because sometimes i post random videos and you don't want to miss those thank you again for tuning in let me know your thoughts on this video format in the comments and i will get back to you and until next time which is tuesday and thursday and sunday 4 15 p.m pst uh, yeah kind of got it down stay creepy